Let's solve leak code 1498, at least that's what I think it's going to be called when it's actually released, number of subsequences that satisfy the given sum condition. So we're given some subarray, right? Or some array, let's say 3, 3, 6, 8, and a target, and let's say it's 10, and we want to count every subsequence from this array where the minimum and the maximum values will sum to less than or equal to our target. And the subsequences have to be non-empty, so we can't just call this part of our result. Now, the most brute force way to do this would literally just be backtracking, check every single combination. So in the first case, we want to know, do we include this three or not? So we have one direction where we do include it and one where we are still empty. Next, we'll decide, do we want the second three or not? In that case, we'll have two threes, otherwise we'll have one three. In this case, we'd have one three, or maybe we'd have nothing so far, right? And so you basically keep doing this, and at the end, you take the minimum and the maximum from the subarray, from the subsequence, and check if they sum to less than or equal to our target. This is going to be two to the power of n. So can we do better? Is there a pattern or is there some information that we can extract to maybe be greedy in some type of way? There is. So in this problem, the target is always going to be positive and the values in our input array are also always going to be positive. So the limiting factor is really how big is the maximum? So the way we can count the subsequences is say, okay, for each minimum, right? Let's say this three is the minimum. How many other values can we add to it so that it's always less than 10? Well, we can add this three to it, right? Three plus three is less than 10, less than or equal to 10. We can also add this six to it. Three plus six is nine, less than or equal to 10. But this eight, three plus eight is 11, right? So that we cannot include. We cannot include this eight. So we can only include these three numbers or a better way to think about it and how we're gonna compute it is if we're definitely including this three as the minimum value in our subsequence, how many other values can we add in this case too? So then how many subsequences that definitely contain this three can we get? Well, it's gonna be two to the power of two. This two is gotten from here, how many characters after. It's not two to the power of three. And the reason is because this three isn't optional. This first three is not a choice that we have. We have to contain it. So we have this three and then we'd have dot, dot, dot. Every subsequence we're computing has to have this three at least so far. So when we're keeping track of our result, we're gonna initially say, it has a two to the power of two plus some other stuff we're gonna get. So now we want all subsequences starting at this three, even though it's still a three, it counts as a unique subsequence, right? Because subsequences matter on the position of the values. So how many values after this three can we get that will make sure that the sum of the min and the max are less than 10 or less than or equal to 10? Well, we know it's just this six. So there's only one value that comes after it that we can do. So to our result, we're going to say two to the power of one is going to be added to the result. So next we get to this six. So how many values can we get after this one? Well, hold on a second. This six is the minimum and the maximum because we can't go left to any values that came before. So the min and the max is six. If we add those together, it's 12. That's too big. So we can't have any subsequences with this six contained as the leftmost value. And I didn't mention this before, but conveniently for us, our input array was sorted and that's what this, or this problem really depends on. Notice since we know that six cannot be contained in any subsequences, for sure eight can't either because eight is even bigger than six. So now we're done, we can compute our result. So it's gonna be four plus two, which is six. There's six subsequences that we can get. So like I mentioned, this array was already sorted for us, which is what this problem depends on. But what if it wasn't sorted? What if it was six, three, eight, three? Well, then we can't really run our algorithm. But the thing about it is the subsequences of the unsorted array 
and the sorted array are always going to be the same. The order of the values, if we change them, it doesn't really change the total number of subsequences that satisfy the condition that we're looking for. That's why we're allowed to sort the input array. For example, if the solution set of the subsequences for the sorted array was something like 3, maybe 3, 6, maybe 3, 3, 6, and that means in the unsorted array, it'll be the exact same subsequences, except they might be in a different order, right? For in this case, it might the subsequence might be 6, 3, 3, instead of 3, 3, 6 over here, right? They're the same subsequence, but the, the order of them has been changed. So that means even if you sorted the input array, and then you tried to compute the number of subsequences that satisfy this condition, it would still be the same number. So now let's write the code in the contest format, of course, because this problem hasn't been released yet. So the first thing we're going to do is sort the input array. And we have to return our solution, which I'm going to call result, initialize it as zero, and we have to return it. It could be really big, so we have to mod it by a value. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to have this copy and paste the value here. So for each minimum, or the left value in this case, I left in enumerate nums. For each value, we want to see how many more values to the right of it can we include in the subsequence to count the number of subsequences with that value as the leftmost. And remember, since our input array is sorted, we don't have to repeat a lot of work. We can just initialize our right pointer at the end of the list or the end of the array, and then keep decrementing it when we need to. So while this is too big, we need to decrement our right pointer. So while the sum, which is left plus nums of right, is greater than or equal to k, and of course, i has to be less than or equal to right. We don't want the right pointer to go too far to the left. But while this is the case, we're going to decrement our right pointer. So at this point, if our right, if our index is still less than or equal to right, meaning our pointer hasn't gone too far, it means we found some values at least that we can add to this leftmost value that will be allowed in this subsequence. So now we need to count the total number. So to our result, we can add a value. We can add two to the power of some value, which is how many are, in, are included in the subsequence. How many choices do we have? And that's going to be right minus i. Basically, the size of our window minus one, because the leftmost value Placed at index i has to be included in the subsequence. We're counting all subsequences that definitely contain this value at index i. And at the end, of course, we're going to return our result. So I had a pretty bad typo, and I, I called it k, and I keep doing that, but it's actually target. So I had another typo. While this is greater than the target is while it's invalid, not while it's equal to the target. So if we change that, it should work. So this is the approach to solve the problem. I had to change the mod down here. I was just modding the portion that we were adding, but that was my mistake. But so this is the approach to solving this problem by sorting and then using the two pointer approach, a left and right pointer. If this was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and thank you for watching.